guys, Vaz here, and I want to introduce you to my new co-host, Mark from Trading Market Technical. Hey guys, what's going on? I'm really, really excited to get started here. I cannot wait to start the show. I think this is where we're going to bring Wall Street to Main Street to literally get an even keel on what's going on with Wall Street. Get the, get the edge to the little guy. Mark, how long have you been doing technical 20, analysis? 28 years. So like forever, and you probably kind of recognize him because... He's the face behind Trading Market Technicals on Technical Tuesday. But guys, no one's doing this, which is why we're going to talk some technicals today. We're going to do technicals. I'm going to be do I'm really excited about doing it. Me too. Very, very excited. All right, so what do we got here? All right, so let's you, talk it. You, you know what? We when I when we're when we're dealing with, uh, with with technical analysis, the first thing is identifying where the trend is going to be. Right? The trend is your friend. Everybody knows. Everybody says it. If you can eliminate that little factor, knowing and identifying the trend. That's 50% of profitability right off the bat. That's exactly what we need. And so I we guess want we have the spiders up here right that's now. That's correct. So let's take a look, see what's going on with the spiders, right? So this is the ETF that's tracking the S&P 500. We call it the SPY. Very large, one of the largest um, ETF that a lot of the institutions use for their portfolio, whether it be hedging, whether it be just looking to buy the spiders for exposure. This is what, what the big players like to look at. I always like to look at that. Now, you can look at the futures as well. You can look at the S&P Cash, the SPX. But for for, uh, for this purpose, I'd like to show yeah. you the spiders. You know what? We could start it off different every time. Absolutely. All right? Absolutely. But what I'm noticing right now is a big bearish rising wedge. Yep, absolutely. We had the uh, um, formation coming off of 2017, beginning of 2018. And obviously, we had that big sell-off that came down, and now we, we uh, started this bearish rising wedge, right? Higher highs and higher lows, and the wedge just kind of ended right around October, and we broke that wedge in October, starting October, and everybody knows what happened after that, right? We were trying to forget, but it's We were pretty trying hard. to forget, right, and it's, it, we're, we're, I think it's still fresh in our minds, that's for sure. Yeah. All right, now, Mark, I had a lot of questions about right here, asking if this is a head and shoulders. This is not a head and shoulders. It is not, and it's actually funny because I did get a lot of um, inquiries about, hey, uh, Mark, is this, in the, is this a head and shoulders pattern, yes or no? It is absolutely not a head and shoulders I know, pattern. I got excited too, and I was like, ah, it, it's, it's it, just not, there, there needs to be a head and shoulders. There needs to be a head and shoulders, correct. So if this left shoulder here, right, the head should be much higher than a left shoulder. It doesn't have to be exactly yeah. Uh, full symmetry, but we want the head to be higher than the left shoulder and higher than the right shoulder. Yeah, no person looks like that. No person I, looks like that. If they look like Absolutely. that, they're probably getting paid a lot on <laughs> That's TV. Right. Just saying. That's right. All Absolutely. Right. So, and then what happens is here, since we had the, uh, the, the tops here, these swing highs that we call them, there are also these bottoms that are swing highs. We had three swing lows down here. We had one, two, and three. So if you could see, this is a sideways consolidation. That's all that is. Not a head and shoulders pattern. Never was. So once this sideways consolidation broke, you see what happened. We had a water, water shed, shed sell off. Goodbye. Goodbye. See ya. <laughs> but no, we, we can we, we can make it back. Uh, we have some some targets here, right, Mark? Right. We so here's what happened. Uh, and what we look at when we look at uh, selling or any type of selling pressure or buying pressure, we want to see where that low or that high stopped. In this in this case, it's going to be where the low stopped, right? So we saw we 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 figured this was the low. We actually ended up. Uh, making that higher low from this from from that one low uh, that was done here. I think believe this was the uh, December 28th. Mm -hmm. So we pull the Fibonacci retracement from high to low here, and when we're doing the Fibonacci retracement, we want to make sure where price adheres to these levels, these ratios, right? Very important. Mm -hmm. And you can see here how it, uh, it adheres 61.8 percent retracement, the golden ratio, very very important. And if we looked at the volume profiles in the back. You can see here that there's a lot of supply and demand here, so it was very active. Uh, trading was very active at these levels here at 275-ish, right? Yeah. And you can see down here at the 50% and 38% where we actually went sideways for three or four days. But Mark, the volume. That's the problem. Did you know that was coming? Yes. Yeah. I kind of figured that that's was That's a concern. That, that's, that's a big, that, to, to me, that's a big concern being a technician and being a trader and being a market strategist. Even though volume, to me, um, is less than what it was uh, back in 2000, 2005, 2009, the, low, the crash low. However, it's still a basis of technical analysis that needs to be used. And you could see the decline in volume that we had here as we are in this, what I call, a corrective rally. A corrective rally. Okay. I do believe that we are in a bear market. We'll confirm that when this corrective rally ends. And we're going to hit these, these Fibonacci levels. We got the 38, the 50, and the 61. 
Yes. Still up for grabs. Yes. And yes. where you're you're saying we're going to fail. I I believe right now my, on, on my technical view that's where we'll fail. Anywhere here, uh, fifty percent, which is the fifty day moving average that comes in right in this area, mm -hmm. and then we have the sixty one point eight percent, and of course the two hundred, which I believe will be very very hard to break back above. And I just said something really scary. What happens when these fail? Good Mark, point. Do, do you have any downside targets? Yes. Unfortunately, I think the downside target would be the Trump low uh, when he was elected. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, markets usually like to overshoot. And if the markets do overshoot, unfortunately, we're looking at uh, a downside target of 1875. 1875. 1875. Oh man, that's something everyone's going to be talking about. Absolutely. But Absolutely. moving on, we have some requests. So okay. let's get on to. I'm excited. Let's the, go. Everyone's talking about this one, tech, but not the tech not you're the thinking. T, T E. C K. I love it. Yeah, I love it's it. Canadian uh, mining company. Yep, Canadian mining company. Let's, let's take a look. Let's see what happens. Let's here. see what's going on, eh? Let's see what happens. Let's okay, look at this well, look chart. At this, eh? Look at this chart. T E C K. Uh, had a beautiful melt up here going into uh, going into the end of 2017, which actually um, did well going into the beginning of 2018. First thing I see is a, a double a double top there. Double top, absolutely. Uh, double top tried to break out and failed. Mm. So that's that's the first concern that I would have. Looking at the, uh, um, you could see the momentum indicators, MACD and RSI. You could see that MACD and RSI started to top here and then started rolling over after we tried to get that double top here. And never really look back, guys. Actually, that MACD and RSI um, started to just make lower lows and lower highs. So that's a really big, important factor for me when I'm looking at uh, a trend of the market saying, all right, does this, does this stock have any more momentum to continue higher and clearly it did not. And well look it was trying to challenge the highs. Yes. Right? Going yes. on there. Yep. And now it's hanging below its two hundred day moving average. Absolutely. And uh, we we actually challenged the two hundred day moving average a couple times here. You could see that clearly here and here and then we finally broke here. Mm -hmm. And that really put us in a downtrend for the beginning part of uh, right around June of 2018. So now we're making lower lows and lower highs here. You can, you can see clearly, and then we have this downtrend channel that was clearly identified, and you can see that here by making swing, low, swing highs here, here, and here, but they're all lower, lower highs. Now in everyday life, a breakout doesn't sound so good, but as we know in technical analysis, we like that. We like that phrase a lot, and that is what happened right here. Correct. And, uh, you know, breakouts are important. Breakouts are, are uh, there are just guys, traders, guys and gals that only trade breakouts. And if you're trading breakouts or breakdowns, what do you need? Volume. Absolutely. You need volume. Volume is part of the game. Volume is key. Right? Volume. Yeah, you like right, that? Exactly. You know, guy, I don't have that, but, hair. you know, it doesn't matter. I don't got a breakout, but I got volume. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All so, right. So, so low volume. So low breakout. volume on the breakout. We tag the 38% Fibonacci retracement, right? And we're holding here. More than likely, this should fail because the technicals are showing that. RSI, MACD are, are absolutely not where it was when we had some good momentum going into the stock. So, but we do have upside targets. They would be the 50 and the 61. Absolutely. Upside targets would be the 50% and 61.8% Fibonacci retracements. But we also want to say that we are in the middle here. So that 200 day moving average will absolutely get challenged. If it does break out, we should see that 61.8% retracement. All right, Mark, let's move on to the next let's request. Do it. By the way, Thank you, John Davies, for T-E-C-K, the other kind of tech. I know you like your commodities, so it was really nice to have you involved. Great, 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 great. I love the T-E-C-K. Awesomeness. Yep. Eh? Thank you. All right, moving on to Microsoft. Hope that helped, by the way. Yeah. Let's, let's do it. I, it better help. <laughs> let's move on to Microsoft from JC. By the way, I lost this request. I, I couldn't find who requested it. Well, there's a lot. Of, we had a lot of requests. I had a lot. That's right. I know. We had but a lot. He, I, he ended up, he, asked, he usually deletes his ads and then he ended up shouting oh, back gotcha. out like, it was me, it was me, it was me. So this one's for you. Okay, here we go. All right. Microsoft? Yeah, Microsoft. All right. I love the company. Great company. I just got a Surface Go, by the way. I saw that. I like it. Do you it. like it better than I Apple? I did. I went on the dark well, side. Well, interesting. Interesting. Right. It is fast, though, but, you know, moving on. Right? Moving on. All right, let's do it. Uh, all right, so we had a beautiful, uh, we had a gap up here mm -hmm. uh, in uh, right when it reported earnings, and we had a beautiful uptrend going into 2018. Uh, I love the stock. Problem is we broke we broke support uh, and this uptrend line in October, like, like the regular market did. So was this basically held hostage to the market? Obviously, we had the tech wreck. So yeah, it's going to get some. Uh, it's going to. It's going to get some uh, residuals from the market breaking down. However, we did break down from this down from this uptrend line. So we are in a, um, a downtrend channel now, right? Making higher highs and higher lows lower lows and lower lows here. So we do have some bearish symmetry, unfortunately. But do we, is this rally corrective right here? 
Uh, yeah, unfortunately, a lot of these stocks are corrective because the market in general is making a corrective move higher. So uh, why do we think that's corrective? Let's say it in unison. Yeah, volume. volume. Unfortunately, volume. So volume is key here, guys. And it's just, look, it's not the only thing that you want to be looking at, but it's very, very important because it, look, price is what pays us as traders, as investors. Price is absolutely king. I always say that, but without price, it's king. You king. You need volume. You need you need that that little guy down below to push that market higher, and and if it does not, so uh, we're oh, looking at downside me. targets right here. Yeah. So right now we're close to the sixty one point eight percent Fibonacci retracement, right? And look at the volume profiles, guys. If you can scan to the left and you can see our volume profiles, this is a lot of supply and demand here. This is where that where this stock was very active. And it absolutely held, which is a good sign. If we can get some momentum and break back above the 200 day, this chart, uh, excuse me, this stock will actually test some of these swing highs back above here. But if not, I'm going to guess that that gap right there is going to be big gap support. Perfect. Absolutely. That will get tested. All gaps absolutely get tested at one point or another. It's not a timing tool, but if the closer you get to price to where the gap is, whether it be gap support or gap resistance, it will get filled. Gaps always get filled. Gaps always get filled. Please mind the gap and please <laughs> mind the next request. Great request, by the way, guys. Keep them coming. I love it. All right. I we, love it. Now, we covered this one before. My girl, Mila, has been trying to get a request in every week. It is your time. Girl. All right, Mila. It I love it. It is your time. She's given us NVIDIA. NVIDIA. Another great stock. Mila, great choice. I love NVIDIA. Great company. Had some issues, right? Really went sideways pretty much all of 2018 after the big melt up in 2017. And what happened? Well, NVIDIA got caught with the Bitcoin debacle, right? Yeah. From, from high of what, 26,000, I think mm -hmm. it was back in December of 17. Yeah. And then it started to melt down. And now all these miners are not mining anymore or they're not doing as much. So that got an issue. And then also we had some supply issues, as you can see from uh, earnings reporting. We had a big gap down. Because basically it did nothing. It did nothing. It did nothing. And did then nothing boom. The watershed. The watershed sell off. Mm -hmm. And also, if you look at the volume profiles, and Mila, you could see this from the side here. And uh, guys, you could see that we had a thin zone here. So we go from this loop, this really active area where price barely got up and then it started to fail. Once we broke this low here, once we broke this area here, okay, you could see that there's a thin zone, very little support down below. And sure enough, look what happened. We rallied, yep. we, we sold off all the way down to this area here. Now, guys, check this out. Are you ready? Big gap resistance, we were just talking about it. Yes. But matching up, coinciding gorgeous. Yes. With the Fibonacci levels. My Uncle Fib, how'd you know that? Who doesn't know Uncle My Fibonacci? Uncle Leonardo. Come Are you on. kidding? Come on. Everyone knows Fibonacci. Uncle Fib. Hey. I love Fibonacci. I love him too. And I do love Fibonacci for technical analysis, He works guys. great. Very, I'm a good cook. Very true to the trend. Sure. Absolutely. Are you kidding me? Look at this. It's perfect. Look at this. So we have this gap area resistance here from here to here. Really important, and I'll tell you why, because where the Fibonacci retracements are, that's where the gap areas are resistance, the upper and lower end of the gap area. So this is going to be an important area to break out if, if and when NVIDIA does break out. And it may be two quarters, depending on the next, uh, uh, the next, next time they report and see how supply restraints are. If they do break, if this does break out, then you could see that we have eliminated bearish symmetry of lower lows and lower highs. So if that does happen, then we're really starting to set up to the bigger upside targets. Yeah, and that would be the 50-day. That would be the 50-day, uh, the, the 50-day moving average. That'll be the first. Once we break back above, your next area is going to be the 50 and the 61.8% Fibonacci retracement. Yeah, and look at the 200 and the 61. And you see how perfect that lines up? It's That's ridiculous. Important. Absolutely, that is key. But this is a great stock. If you're still in it, um, you know, I, I would say, you know, hang on. Um, I do think you need probably a couple of quarters. A couple of quarters. Yeah. What is it, a washing machine? It's a washing machine. <laughs> All right, next. Thanks for your request. Halliburton. Guys, who, who requested Halliburton? JC, thank you for, you know, speaking up to Microsoft. But Halliburton, we, we don't know. Halliburton, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a ghost. We want somebody, to get, it's a ghost. Somebody said, somebody said Halliburton. <laughs> the ghost of Wall Street. We, we lost who it was, but anyway, this so is, is it for spooky? you. That's this the question. This is for you and then the viewers. Now, Halliburton is interesting. Uh, I, I personally like... Um, 
oil and oil stocks. They have gotten battered. They have gotten beaten up. We all know sure. that from a high of 77 just recently down to a low of 42. We know that's crude mm -hmm. oil, right? Now, crude oil is susceptible um, with these oil stocks. They, yeah. they will take a hit according to what crude oil is. Like. Sometimes, sure. sometimes the similarity and, and the correlation kind of deviates a little bit. So, but yeah, more sometimes, and more, it sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't. Bada bing, bada boom. Bada bing, bada boom. But however, uh, this is a real simple chart. It's a nice chart. It's clean. Uh, Halliburton's a great company. I like a lot of the uh, oil stocks and I like where crude oil is headed back into 2019. If you could be patient in crude oil and oil stocks, I think you'll be rewarded in uh, the latter part of 2019. But let's take a look real quickly. It looks very similar. S similar thing that's kind of going on with the very, general very market. Very similar. We could see that we had uh, we had a nice double top here. We held the 200. Once we broke the 200, what happens? A lot of a lot of fund managers, money managers, portfolio managers, they look at the 200-day moving average. It's known fact. If we break below it, we separate price away from it. We're going to go lower. Um, it's just, it's just they start selling stocks. That's just the way they work. That's a great the, point, Mark. Yeah, these are the bigger fund managers, not the everyday guy that's trading. We want to pay attention to the 200 on the daily chart. Very, very important. So we broke the 200-day on price, and we started to head lower, right? And what have we formed here? We formed a nice little bullish, Whoa, falling, bullish falling wedge. wedge. Right. I now, like those wedges. I love wedges. Wedges are one of the important, one of my favorite things to trade. They make me taller. They make me money. Make me taller too, by the way. Hey, there you go. <laughs> Hey! So th this actually, <laughs> I love it. This actually broke out, all right, of this bit of this bullish fallen wedge pattern. But what do we have here? Oops, excuse me. What do we have here? We have the same problem as we did in all five charts. We have mm -hmm. low volume again, and 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 on top of that, we have our uh, MACD and RSI, our momentum indicators. They're not really showing us strength like we did back here in 2019. You can see where yeah. MACD. You can see the MACD if you're going back here from 2018. High, lower high, lower high from this previous high, lower high from this previous high, and now we're making another lower high from this previous high. So we're right at the 50-day. The next target's going to be the downtrend, uh, line. The, the downtrend line, right? Yep. There we go, 30, yep. 33.59. Yep. And then the, the one just above that, which looks just, which is nicely, because if you look at this, if you, you guys, if your viewers can see here, there's a gap area right here of resistance. More than likely, if we can break back above this downtrend line, we should get enough momentum to absolutely break above the 200-day moving average and to fill, fill the, the gap. gap. If we can. If we can. If we can. If we can. Wow, Mark, we went over a lot. I we did. Like, I feel like we're talking to our children. <laughs> Guys, thanks for tuning in to Talking Technicals. Had a great time, and I'm really looking forward to the next show. Guys, and I really appreciate all of the requests. I can't wait for the next Keep bunch of requests. Keep them coming. Will you come it. on again? Are you kidding me? Let's absolutely. do it. Let's, Let's do talk it. some technicals. Let's do it.